This Mass is being live-streamed from the Carmelite Monastery in Ganelabar, New South Wales. In accordance with Australian Government directives, the Mass is being celebrated in a closed church. All persons involved in this live-stream presentation of Holy Mass are direct employees of or contractors working for the Diocese of Lismore. All music used in this celebration is in the public domain or are original works of the Diocese of Lismore. of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today we gather together to, consi- to continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Today is the octave of the resurrection, and we have St. Thomas the Doubter in today's Gospel. Let's, as we begin Mass, bring all of our doubts and all of our difficulties as followers of Christ to the altar of God, and ask for the support of our Lord. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. Christ have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. 
God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people who you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the Brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day but met in their homes for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The word of the Lord. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we have a sure hope and a promise of an inheritance that can never be spoiled or soiled and never fade away because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation which had been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold, 
Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible, even though it bears testing by fire. And then you will have praise and glory and honor. You did not see him, yet you love him. And still without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described. Because you believe. And you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward. This is the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And for those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then Thomas spoke. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus We are now into the weeks of Easter time, which carry us all the way through until the ascension of our Lord and finally the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And this is one of the most sacred periods of the church's year. I want to point out a few things that we have in all of the resurrection appearances. I don't believe they're fundamentally to prove that he's risen from the dead, 
because as we recognized on Easter Sunday, John, the beloved disciple, recognized the risen Christ without seeing him. And so in terms of what we have, there is a possibility of believing he is risen without seeing him, which is the case for all of us. And so when we look at the, at the resurrection accounts, these are not simply to say that he is risen, but they concern the person or the people to whom Jesus appears. And in today's gospel, it's about Thomas. You will also find that there's nothing accidental, serendipitous or of chance in any of the post-resurrection appearances. It's almost as if now everything is in Jesus' control and hands and he decides what he is doing. And in today's gospel, there are two parts. The first appearance, Thomas is not there. The second appearance, Thomas is there. No doubt because Jesus knew at the first appearance Thomas wouldn't be there and that he would be there at the second. It would have been very strange if Thomas was absent in both, wouldn't it? You wouldn't have the story. And the reason that Jesus does this is because he knows Thomas. And he knows Thomas very well. And we will see that in all of the appearances they happen because of the knowledge that Jesus has of the person or the people to whom he appears. And in this instance, he knows who Thomas is. Thomas, in fact, is a very contemporary kind of person. The modern world, contemporary Australia, is full of Thomases. People who, for whom belief is almost an impossibility. I believe in the money that I've got in the bank. I believe in the car that I've got parked outside. I believe in the television that I watch because it's there. I can touch it. I can see it. It's mine. It's a physical reality. But don't talk to me about non-physical things because I am an intelligent 21st century Australian and that means that I will not believe anything until it can be proven to me. That's a very rational way to do things. And in some respects, we have to live like that. Otherwise, we will go with every bit of fake news that seems to pass by every day. So there's a certain correctness in this man, Thomas. The problem is... Jesus recognises that unless I come and do something to Thomas, he will never believe. Think about it. Even if Jesus had just walked in one day and said, here I am, Thomas, touch my side, put your finger in the side, see the, the holes in my hands, would that have been enough to convince the contemporary rational sceptic or even Thomas? And the answer certainly is no, it wouldn't have been. Because one day Thomas will go away and think, maybe I was dreaming. Because people don't rise from the dead. Maybe someone else was there who was pretending to be Jesus. And that's one of the earliest Christian heresies. So a simple appearance for someone like Thomas, Jesus, I believe, knows is not sufficient. And so we must look at the gospel carefully and see what is the relevant part of the gospel. And the important part of the gospel are these words, peace be with you. Because these are the words that somehow link both appearances. And perhaps this is the miracle of today's gospel, not the touching. St. Teresa of Avila said to us in about the fifth or the sixth mansions of the interior castles that God can come into our lives and speak the word peace to our souls and we will have that peace forever. 
God can come into our lives and speak a word which gives the soul certainty and the soul will never doubt again. And Jesus knows that the only way to break the obstacle which is Thomas is to speak a word to his heart, to his soul, which will change him forever. And the words are given today in John's Gospel, peace be with you. He spoke those words to those in the upper room the first time when Thomas wasn't there. And thereafter they believed. Thomas didn't believe. Now he comes and says to Thomas, peace be with you. And it indicates to us on this octave, the eighth day after the Lord's resurrection, what the nature of the resurrection is for each of us personally. It is belief and it is a belief which is given by God. Part of the miracle of the resurrection is the miracle of the person who believes because that 2,000 years later, people who never saw him walking around, who didn't see him visibly after the resurrection, that there are billions of people who believe that he is resurrected, speaks of what today's gospel is about. And it's about faith. And today, the church invites you to open your heart more deeply, more profoundly, to the words, peace be with you, to allow those words to enter within, to change in such a way that the words, peace be with you, become who you are, because that peace is grounded in the resurrection of our Lord. Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The risen Christ brought his peace to the apostles as he showed them his pierced hands and side, let us pray confidently in his name, knowing that he brings true peace through his victory over death. That the whole community of the church may remain faithful to the teaching of the apostles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the divine mercy may bring peace to our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At this particular time, we pray for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus and particularly for those in intensive care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for the sick and elderly who at this time are housebound, isolated and unable to see or be with their loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who are sick and bereaved may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of St. Mary of the Cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed will enter the sure hope and promise of the heavenly inheritance, especially Bruce Dorr, John Prine, Tony Evans, and Robert Julian Davis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Cheers. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, <clears throat> by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her into the fullness of charity together with francis our Pope. <coughs> and Gregory, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, <coughs> hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. <coughs> but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal mystery may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Heavenly Father, I pray your continuing I pray your continued blessing on our country, Australia, and all its people. Grant your protection to them from this coronavirus. Let all those who serve on the front of health care be protected and strengthened by your love and lead us swiftly to some kind of medical solution to this virus pandemic. And I ask Almighty God to bless you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
down All my hopes, all my life, all of me Draw me, draw me into you. 